Hello and welcome. This is Books I Have Read in 2022. This is the very last part of this three-part series. Let's just get started. The first book is The Widening Stain by W. Bolingbroke Johnson. This is one of those special little treasures that I found in a, a used bookstore and was drawn to the, the spine, was drawn to the name, picked it up, read the first few pages, and thought this will be right up my alley. This story is told from the perspective of a young woman that works in the Cornell University Library. It is a murder mystery. The murder takes place in the library. The whole the whole story takes place in the library, which is just such a fun setting. I believe this book was written in the early 40s, and the language definitely has that 1940s vibe. There's some words in this that we just don't use anymore. Uh, and, and I think that's really fun to get kind of a, a history lesson without the, it, it being an intentional history lesson. It's just the style of writing and little things that the people do and say. Uh, there's a lot of typewriters and uh, they're still using the Dewey Decimal, which I, I really miss in the library setting. Anyways, it was just really fun. It's pretty simple. It was very straightforward, but it was a nice read and an easy read. At that same used bookstore, I found Captain Blood and I was, the color of this book really drew my eye because it was surrounded by muted color spines. And I have a vague memory of Captain Blood as a child. And I know it was a mo movie that my grandpa would have probably loved and my mom has seen. I haven't seen the movie yet. It's with Errol Flynn. Uh, but this is the story in which the movie Captain Blood came from. And it's about a pirate. And I really, I had a lot of fun. I haven't read a pirate story in so long. I think the last one I read would have been Treasure Island and that was years and years ago. But it was just a good, fun story. The middle of the book felt a little stagnant because the main story wasn't really progressing. There wasn't a lot of movement there and each chapter was these tiny little micro stories within the, the, the greater story but it did wrap up really nicely. I really like Captain Blood. He is not, as his name might sound, a horrific person, but a really, really wonderful person who actually is kind of complex and has a whole bunch of layers, which surprised me. Smashed, this is a graphic novel by Jinji, Junji Ito. This is the third one that I've read from him. And this one is actually 13 short stories. And I had a lot of fun with it. It was just fun. They're not complicated. They're not, they're not layered. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of character development, but it's just fun. And this Smashed and probably Uzumaki are the ones that I've enjoyed reading the most of his out of the three. Gaio was the third one and I just didn't really like it. The library book. If there was ever a book that I just wanted to hug, it was this book. I just, it's something about it. It's just so huggable. I pulled this down from a shelf in another used bookstore because it was in the true, true crime section. And I thought, ooh, this sounds intriguing with the premise being the a fire that took place at the LA library in the 1980s, I believe. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I thought it would be more of a, a crime story, but it actually was really a story about libraries. And it was so good. <laughs> and I just want to hug it. Like I said, very huggable book. It's a nonfiction and she uses this particular catastrophic event as as a, a spoke in the wheel and all of these 
stories, these side stories about the library and the people that work at the library and books in themselves kind of spiral out of that spoke. And it's just, it's a beautiful book. If you like books, if you love books, I think this is a really good one to read. It'll just make you love books even more. And for me, a whole new level of appreciation for our libraries and how valuable they actually are in our cities. Definitely one of those things that we just take for granted. And then I read <laughs> A Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. This has been on my reading list for decades. This was one of my favorite movies as a kid. It was also my family's favorite movie. My grandpa and my mom and my uncle. It was just one of those movies that was on fairly regularly at my grandpa's house. And so it was fun to actually get to read the book, which in a lot of ways was very similar to the movie. However, the movie had different characters completely, or at least there was a new character introduced. And the main scientist guy in the book was way more aggravating. I just, oh, I really wanted to just punch him in the face sometimes and be like, you slow down and listen and think about the consequences of your action and all the people whose lives you are impacting right now based on these crazy notions that you have. Uh, but it was really fun. This one I read, Cursed by Carol Higgins Clark. I had heard of this author before. Her books are kind of everywhere in the mystery sections. She's a very prolific writer. And Brian actually ordered a book, a used book online, and they sent him this one instead. And the return policy was so complicated that he was like, whatever, I'll, I'm just gonna keep the book. And I read it and it was fun. Maybe I'll read, if I find another Carol Higgins Clark in a thrift store or something, I'll probably pick it up and read it. It wasn't life-changing or like, I don't, I don't want to say it wasn't quality because the writing was still good and the story was still captivating, but it's very uh, formulaic. It's like a lot of, I feel like a lot of mystery stories are like this, but I had fun with it. And then came Halloween time and I was really in the mood for something spooky. And I saw this in the window of a bookstore that had all of these spooky Halloween themed books out on display. This one just caught my eye. I knew of H.P. Lovecraft for, I don't know, how could you grow up and not know of H.P. Lovecraft or have her, heard that name? It just feels like a very iconic name, like Stephen King or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Anyways, this one is The Blood Curdling Tales of Horror and the Macabre. And this one is many, many short stories. I actually only got through to this. I read many of the stories. They're very dense, but they're short and they're fun. Nothing scary, I think. Um, maybe some people would be scared. I kind of don't think so. They're just more moody and gothic. Nothing gory or there isn't like detailed accounts of of someone being murdered or anything they're just they're just moody and dark and they're fun i will definitely pick this one up again at some point and i imagine as i have with sherlock holmes just read a story in between books when i i don't know what i'm going to read next the lost man by jane harper so my friend here in tucson gave me two jane harper books well to borrow and she's like you have to read them i've now read all of the jane harper books at this point she just like ate them up and so i read this one and oh my goodness captivating story such a good solid mystery story it is set in the outback which is a really interesting place to learn about and the way jane harper just kind of weaves the story of life as these cattle ranchers in the outback without telling you about it. It just is these people's experiences and that's how you kind of learn about it. And it's just, it's really well written, really well written. And the story feels unexpected. And I really, 
felt so much connection to the characters. They felt very real. They felt very alive. They felt very relatable. It was an intense story. And after I finished it, I just was <laughs> like, whew, okay. I need something that is a little bit, I feel like there's two different mystery genres. <laughs> like there's two different trees or branches in the mystery tree. Uh, and one is more realistic, really intense, emotionally complicated murder mysteries. And then there's the cozy, lighthearted murder mysteries that you just want to curl up and makes you feel all like good inside and squishy. This was on this side of, of the tree. And so I needed then a cozy, squishy, feel good murder mystery. And I continued with the Secret Book and Scone Society novels. This is the third one in the series by Ellery Adams called The Book of Candlelight. The first two books I read, I, I've talked about them in videos and I was so reluctant to accept how much I love this series. Uh, it just is, I don't, I don't even want to say what I, what, how I feel, uh, or why I felt reluctant anymore, because I just, I really do. I love this series. It makes me feel good. I have developed a relationship with the characters. I am invested in their lives. I want to know what's going to happen to them. Uh, I wish they were my friends. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's great. Then this book, I found this in one of those airport bookshops. It caught my eye. It's called The White Hair by Jane Johnson and the cover was just very, very eye-catching. And I had finished up the book that I brought with me, which was the, the, can, the Book of Candlelight and needed another book for the ride home. And so I grabbed this one Oh my gosh, I fell so hard in love with this book and I'm trying to get Brian to read it because I, I think on some level he'll really appreciate appreciate it too. Uh, it's just, I don't even, I don't even know how to explain what this book is, but it's powerful. It's really powerful. It is a mystery. There is a murder, but it's not a murder mystery. I would not want to put it in the mystery section. I'd, I'd want to put it in in just the fiction section. It's just a story of a family and these people and their experiences and their lives and their journeys and the challenges that they face set in this beautiful, <laughs> moody uh, coastal town. A lot of history though in this book, pagan particularly. The white hair is is a very important part of this book and I just I'm afraid to say too much which is why I'm having a hard time explaining this book but I just really loved it it took my breath away it captivated me and I guess it's another book that I want to hug and maybe out of all of these books for the third portion of the year this one is my favorite and maybe one of my favorites for the whole year actually I really liked it that much. And then I read yet another Ellery Adams, A Secret Book and Scone. And this is the fourth, fourth one in the series called Ink and Shadows. And I'm all caught up now. The fifth book comes out in paperback in March of 2023. So I won't have this cozy little series to turn to in between more intense books from here on out. But there are other books that I can read. And now I am currently reading The Seagate, which is another Jane Johnson book who wrote The White Hair. I have no idea where this story is taking me. There is a lot of mystery, but again, I wouldn't put it on the mystery shelf. Uh, and it is a story told through two different women. One, uh, a woman, her life, in the 1940s during the war and the other in modern times, I'm assuming whenever this book was written, which may have been in the 2000s and their lives are intertwined in a, in a big way 
I think. I don't know yet. I don't know enough about this book. But again, the writing is captivating. And, and I want to know more because there are these little mysteries that I feel mean so much more than what I am reading at this moment. So, so we'll see. I think, I don't know. I don't think I'll read another book by the end of the year. We'll see how long this one takes me. That's why I figured it was safe to go ahead and, and post this video. So that's it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all later.